It's Artist Direct here on FM 100.5. So happy this morning to have Nomaly Brennan in studio. Uh, Nomaly, that was beautiful. Thanks, and good morning. And good morning. <laughs> and I appreciate that uh, an artist such as yourself is not afraid of these morning hours. Yeah, it's... Um... Or if you are, you're hiding it well. I'm so tired. I can't even reply to that. <laughs> well, I'm actually, I'm actually sitting here thinking, you know, I feel bad because, you know, we drag you guys out of your beds in the morning and you have to come up and play and you've got shows at night. I mean, you guys are, you're, you're traveling around, you're hawking your music out there and you got to do these late night shows and you get up in the morning. Are there, are there other places in the country that make you get up as early as we do? No. Okay. <laughs> well, we like to be the best at something. Uh, Nomaly Brennan, first of all, the song we just heard. It's called, Isn't That Enough? Which came first, the lyrics or the, the melody on this one? Um, almost always the, the music comes first, Does like it? the chords yeah. on the guitar, and then a melody, and then some words in the melody. So I, I have this fantasy in my head of, of you, you know, sitting around in your luxurious apartment, right? That's the fantasy part of it. Okay, that's the fantasy part. <laughs> but, I mean, do you just, do you spend your day fiddling around on the guitar? I mean, do you do it while you're watching the Olympics? Do you do, is it just always in your hand? I'm not watching the Olympics. You're, what? <laughs> no, I've been, I've sort of been in a bubble because, you know, I'm, I've been traveling so much and I don't have a TV in my car, you know? Good point. And uh, so I hmm. kind of just realized when we were at the bar last night, oh yeah, the Olympics are happening. Yeah. So what other things have you eschewed while you're traveling? Just remind me again what es eschewed means. Um, you pushed aside. <laughs> That you, are, that you are no longer partaking in while you're on the road. <laughs> um, well, having a place to live, I guess, is one of those. There's that. Yeah. Well, you know, your vehicle's your home, right? I just got this car in February, and since March, I'm about to turn over 20,000 miles. 20,000 miles? Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking to myself a lot these days is, why didn't I get the extended warranty? Because <laughs> <laughs> at the time, it seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Nomaly Brennan is here live in studio. Now, we've had you up here a couple of times, and uh, I'm always excited when you come back to town. Was really thrilled to have you uh, sort of jump in out of nowhere at Nordic Fest, um, open stage night, the weekend of Nordic Fest. And what's always impressive to me is we have people that come in, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm moved by their talents. I love to see collaborations. And then you get on stage, and it's just a different realm. It's a different realm of musicianship, and it's, there's something about that voice of yours that just captures people. Do you find that when you're going across the country that when you, when you get that mic in front of you and you start playing, that people just stop what they're doing and stare? Yeah, sometimes, but I don't know why they're staring. Oh, <laughs> it's the and music. being a little bit of an insecure person, I could think of like any number of reasons that they might be staring. That's so yeah. funny, really. Still, yeah. as talented as you are, there's an insecurity there? Yeah, I, I think it's, for me, I think it's healthy in a way. A healthy it, insecurity? How so? It, it's, well, it may not be healthy, but I feel like it does make sure that I'm coming from a place of pretty, pretty extreme humility. I never, I never think, I'm so great. Wait till you hear me. Everybody's going to go crazy, you know? I just think this is what I do. I hope that it has meaning. I've been working at it for a long time, and I don't know. I mean, I, I constantly I hear other, you know, other people who, uh, like at the open stage, you know, people have these really, like, high, sweet voices, and right. people have, like, bands and other people playing with them, and I always think that maybe I sound a little odd or something. Yeah, you get on stage and you just take command. It's one of those beautiful things, and 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 it may be that humility and that humble quality that you have, that um, that sort of unassuming manner when you get up on stage that makes you just really stop and say, "Now, wow, there's a real talent." At least it does on my end, because Lord knows we've got enough people that think they're fantastic and get up on pretty much any soapbox or venue that they that they can, and they're not always that good. It, it disturbs me sometimes. Um to hear that because people that I really admire, you know, like Patti Smith or Joni Mitchell or Bob Dylan or Paul Simon or some of the really classic songwriters like Leonard Cohen, I feel like they have a real sense that what they do is like a collaboration with some creative force. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've read interviews and books and things and well, maybe just this one book, but anyway, okay. <laughs> but I had interviews with all of them. Um, but there was definitely a sense that like, you know, of, kind of humility that like it's a yeah. privilege to do what you do and uh, it, it disturbs me a little bit when I when I hear songwriters who um, 
you know, have more than a healthy sense of ego about what they do. Cause I feel like that really prevents you from getting better and you can always get better in some way, you know, when you're writing, I know meaning is really important to you. Depth, storytelling, feelings, emotions, they come out in your songs. Is it important to you to get those messages that are sort of sitting maybe in your soul, in your brain, in your gut out to other people? Or is it that you just need to get it out for yourself? That's such a good question. I don't even know how to answer that. I've just always felt like it was sort of, I, I don't know that I would describe it as my job, Yeah. but I always felt like it was kind of what I was here to do. And then I feel like the, I guess I just feel like I'm supposed to create things mm -hmm. and then put them out in the world. And then, you know, hopefully they add something to the world and people find meaning in them. Uh, I, I probably would do it anyway. I feel like because the moment, my favorite thing in the world is to start writing a song. Cause really? it's like, it's better like, than the finish of writing it. Um, yeah. Really? It's like meeting somebody and falling in love. It's like you get plugged into this mm -hmm. kind of energy and you're excited and there's something interesting. That's really beautiful. I love it. Writing a song akin to falling in love. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why your songs resonate so much with folks when they get a chance to hear them because you really do write like you're falling in love. I think that's beautiful. Even if I'm falling in love with sadness. Even if you're falling in <laughs> Sometimes that's the best thing. Don't you think there's... I Look, all of us have grown up at some point attached to some musician or song that really f made us feel something. And oftentimes, that song was not the pop hit of the summer. Mm -hmm. It was something that captured a feeling, an emotion that you had that you've experienced or you were experiencing in that moment. And someone got it down in song. And they echoed that pain or that sadness or that melancholy, whatever it might be, in a way that you maybe couldn't have done yourself. And so mm -hmm. you're really appreciative for those songs. I mean, that takes a special talent to be able to do that. And I think you've got it. It's Anomaly Brennan here on Artist Direct FM 100.5. Can I get you to do three songs today? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so tell me the second song you're going to do here for me uh, before you start playing it. Well, since I had planned on doing two, I'm not sure what the second song is going to be. <laughs> <clears throat> I love putting you on the spot and that you don't mind. <laughs> um, you know, I could do something new. What is the name of this one we're going to do? It's called Counting Rosaries. Counting Rosaries. Yeah. All right. It's a new song. Should I say anything about it? Would you? Well, it was something that I wrote um, when I was experiencing a lot of anxiety. Like, as a, for the past year, basically, I haven't, I gave up my uh, permanent address about a year ago. And, you know, because I spend like six or seven months a year on the road, and it's it's hard to justify keeping an apartment. I also mm -hmm. wasn't sure um, if I wanted to keep living in the Southwest anymore. So, but sometimes that can be very uh, anxiety provoking, believe it or not. Anyway, this was, uh, sometimes I, I do get up and worry about things at like four or five in the morning. I can't help it. And um, it's funny how I, I get spiritual really quickly mm -hmm. when I'm in a tight spot like that. And I start reaching for like Buddhist books and music. And, and at, at the time I had these Buddhist prayer beads and I would get up at four in the morning and just start like saying these mantras and go through them until I fell back asleep which can be sometimes two or three hundred times. <laughs> That's a lot. But nice to know that that comfort is there. And this song is based on that? Sort of based on that idea. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of sitting with anxiety and who knows what else, but I like playing it.
got me saying my old prayers and counting rosaries by candlelight. And the road stretches on, bending low. Anomaly Brennan, we're glad to have you here. And now you have, is it five albums out now? It is, in fact, nine. How do you do that much? How, when do you record? I mean... When don't I record? I'm recording right now. Get out. <laughs> I just, I, I am, I'm, I'm constantly surprised by you because right now you're without a home, living in your Nissan and driving around and you're still recording. Oh, but you know what I'm doing now? This is, it's ingenious. Tell uh, me. I'm working on a live CD oh. <laughs> and um, I've been recording... I don't know, 12 or 15 shows that I've recorded, like kind of all over the country. And uh, I just went through them and sort of whittled it down to like 18 or 19 songs that I have to whittle down to like maybe 13 or 14. You could have a double album. My gosh. Oh my. I could. Anomaly Brennan, double CD. Um, so actually, I have someone in Portland mixing it for me right now. Wow. I just did a photo shoot in Indianapolis. <laughs> you are busy designer. all the time. Yeah, but a lot of my busyness consists of sitting behind the wheel of a car. So it's like, it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm getting a lot done. I'm just sitting there. Okay, what's your random year? We know you like to write. We know, I'm sure when you're alone in the car, you're thinking of lyrics, you're thinking of songs. You're and I know you're doing it at night when you're in bed and you can't sleep. But what is your guilty pleasure? The thing you do when you're not writing music, maybe when you're driving or hanging out in random towns all over the country that we wouldn't know that you do or enjoy? I play competitive Scrabble. No, you don't. I do. I absolutely <laughs> do. I've played in some tournaments. I, I belong to, used to belong to a club in Tucson that met every Thursday at Denny's. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That just made it better. Doesn't it, though? I, I didn't know there was competitive Scrabble. Oh, yes, there is. And um, have you won a tournament? I won a small tournament. Uh, then, that's winning a tournament. Okay. I mean, I, I, I can't even determine when someone's word is a real word or not. So they love playing with me because I'm usually confused. Well, let me put it this way. I did make $100. <gasps> Get out. <laughs> so what we need to do the next time you come in town is we need to host a Decor, a competitive Scrabble uh, um, invite. You know, I actually have a good friend in Decor that I play Scrabble with. Oh, Mike. He's amazing. So we need to get Mike and you... And whoever else wants to sign up and we'll what, do a, have a little kitty. People put in five bucks or something. How mm -hmm. do you do that? And then the winner takes all? Something like that, yeah. Or, uh, or we just get, you know, the big wigs at the radio station here to, to foot the bill. Maybe it could be like a KDEC benefit or something, you know? <laughs> That's right. People could take bets on what the final score will be and how many seven-letter words I'll play. You know, I that think that's a great idea. What is the longest word you've played? Probably eight or nine letters. I don't know. Something really? Something that you can play through two tiles and make a word. That's always... That's such nerdy Scrabble talk. I'm really impressed right now. Oh, you don't know the half of it. 
<laughs> things you didn't know about Anomaly Brennan folks here on Artist Direct. Yeah. That's what we're here for, to make sure people get a little uh, closer contact with the artists they love. Yep. People and want to know these things. People want to know. They want to know that I have, you know, 10, 11 games going right now on Facebook. No, you don't. I do. How do you, does that, what? And do you, do you have one of those smartphones? Yes, I do. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Well, we want to thank the <laughs> folks on Elm Street in Cresco, Holstrom Jewelers, for supporting Artist Direct. And we thank you guys for supporting live music and getting out and seeing it when you can. I will say this. If you ever have an opportunity to see Anomaly Brennan live in concert, please do so. And Anomaly, uh, folks, you know, sometimes they're traveling across the country, and we've got people that are listening all across the country online. Mm -hmm. Where can we go to find out your schedule? Well, I would suggest my website. That sounds brilliant to yes. me. Yes. And thanks for making it so easy, by the way. Nomalybrennett.com. If you can't remember that, just Google Nomaly, N-A-M-O-L-I. You'll get a result probably for a pizza place in New York, a village in Fiji, a type of reef rock, and also a musician. <laughs> I am the musician. Oh, my goodness. Okay, yeah. so look up Nomaly. Now I just want to look it up to see all the other things, but I will come to you eventually. And also feel free to start a game of Scrabble with me on Facebook, if, you know. Oh, now there's an invite. You are the first Artist Direct person to ever invite someone I'm to... I'm kind, of, kind of a trailblazer like that. Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Nomaly Brennan here on Artist Direct FM 100.5. Will you do another song for us before you go? Oh, okay. I'll do one more song. Which, which one will you do? I'm going to do Honeybee. Will you? We talked about that. Thank you for honoring uh, my request. You're so welcome. <laughs> it's Nomaly Brennan here on Artist Direct FM 100.5. Drifting on the summer breeze, twisting like a melody and spinning like a top. Fly, fly, honeybee, out beyond the apple tree. Oh, fly, fly, honeybee. Honey bee, honey bee, honey bee, honey bee, honey bee, honey bee.